right? Really, you know, a field of weeds, it's a permaculture garden. It just grows something you don't want. Um, every year, the weeds grow and they die and create a mulch. And the more leaves grow and they die and create a mulch. The more leaves grow, <laughs> they die and create a mulch. So there's organic. Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I did a video very recently where I was sharing the results that I'd gotten with a uh, Ruth Stout potato garden that I put in last spring and the results were really good. Uh, it wasn't the greatest potato uh, yield ever but it took almost no time to put the garden in. So I uh, had a lot of questions about that. Um, some, there was some confusion about uh, how to go about doing it. A lot of questions along that, those lines. Um, there's uh, people who are worried about different kinds of pests, moles and voles and things like that. And uh, also people uh, just said, I tried it, it didn't work for me. Um, so I'm going to speak to those three uh, questions here in this video. I'll probably take you around the garden and show you a couple examples of things I'm talking about here. So the, the first one is, what are we talking about when we're, when we're saying Ruth Stout Garden? Uh, and again, I, I'm not an expert on this and I didn't invent this. And, uh, you know, I've, I've, everything I know is just stuff I've read. And I've not read every one of Ruth Stout's books. Um, and I imagine most people have just, there's a short video that you can find on YouTube if you just type Ruth Stout's Garden. It's probably the first one to come up. And it's a short 10 or 15 minute video of this uh, older woman with a cane kind of hobbling around her garden. It's about, her garden's about the same size as mine. Uh, 50 feet by 50 feet, 2,500 uh, square feet. And... Uh, and you're watching the video and it's very inspiring to see this really old, you know, a woman of an advanced age, a person of advanced age, uh, able to maintain such a large garden. And it's because of the way she goes about doing it. And so people watch that video and, and they think, I have to do exactly what she did in the video. So let's define Ruth Stout Garden. <coughs> a Ruth Stout Garden is a, a garden that is not tilled, that has successive layers of mulch applied to it, either annually or, or, or even more often than that. So you're perpetually bringing in various forms of mulch and laying them on the soil. So, in, in, and you're not tilling it. That's the simplest way I could define that. You're adding mulch and you're not tilling the soil. So in that sense, it's a permaculture garden. In that sense, it's a back to Eden garden. In that sense, it's a lasagna garden. In that sense, it's a no-till garden, <laughs> right? <laughs> I, th I like to use the word no-till because it's it's so uh, descriptive <laughs> and it sells the main feature. <laughs> um, I, I suppose the most uh, uh, descriptive way to put the kind of garden I have is I have a no-till garden that I perpetually mulch with any kind of mulch I can find. And that's another thing that jams up people. They watch the Roostoad video, they probably have not read every book of hers, and uh, they think that if you're going to do it the way she did it, you have to use spoiled hay because that's what she uses. She used spoiled hay because that's what she could source and that's what worked for her and that was what she was able to get. Um, and I've used spoiled hay in my garden. It's, it's an incredible mulch. It breaks down very fast and it adds a lot of nutrients to the soil. Um, and yes, it's got a thousand weed seeds in it, but um, you know, I, I really don't spend any time weeding my garden <laughs> over the course of the growing season uh, in the fall, this time of year. Uh, when I'm putting gardens down for the season, I will pull up weeds. I tend to pull all the weeds up. I throw all the weeds on my lawn. I run over the whole thing with the lawnmower and I throw it all back on top of the garden. <laughs> right? It's a mulch. So it's still not a big... Uh, the weeds are actually a source of mulch for me. Um, but anyway, the point is is that you don't have to have straw or hay or spoiled hay. You can use any any organic matter that you can source. I would say just use whatever you can find that's, that's free, that's close by. Right? Um, I have to drive to work. Unfortunately, I have a full. <laughs> this doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> I wish it did, but it doesn't. Uh, I have a full-time job, and I have a commute every day. And I drive by people's houses, and they put bags of leaves and, and lawn clippings and stuff like that out. And it's all nicely and neatly in a, in a brown paper bag. So, and I can use the, the bags as well. I use them for weed suppression in the garden. So uh, that's what I use. And really, lawn clippings are hay. <laughs> in, all, in all the ways that matter, lawn clippings are hay. It's grass. Hayes grass. So, uh, yeah, I, I use that. You don't have to use, do it exactly the way uh, Ruth Stout did with bales of hay. If you can get those, great. But if, if you're driving to some farm store way outside of town and forking out cash for bales of hay, um, you're sure you can do that, but you don't have to do that. <laughs> right? That's, 
if you're if you're not having success it's it's not because you're not doing that or you don't or put it another way you don't have to do that to have success because really what are you doing right you, you're you're creating an environment in, in your soil that the organisms that improve soil like to be in not only that but by pr applying the mulch perpetually you're giving those organisms uh, the food they need to live and die and move around and, and do all the wonderful things with the soil they do. So that's a real start garden and I hope that uh, that definition works for people. The second thing I want to talk about is uh, the concern about uh, mice, moles, rats and all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know all, all, all those things tunnel underground and uh, if you're using a mulch anywhere they're gonna like the environment. Um, but if that made a garden impossible, I would not have a garden here. <laughs> I, mean, I mulch every single one of them, not just my potatoes, but every single garden bed I have here is mulched heavily. All the time. And so if, if by mulching it, it brought in moles and mice and voles and rats to an extent where a garden wouldn't be possible, I would not have a garden. And I'm gardening on the edge of a forest here, and I have moles. I've seen them. I have voles. I've killed them, right? <laughs> I have mice, I have squirrels, I have rodents. I don't, thankfully, I don't have rats here. Um, so, yeah, I have all those things here and they're, they're sort of part of the ecosystem. And uh, the odd potato gets a bite, but I would say <clears throat> it's about one in 30, uh, might have a nibble in it. I really don't think they're too crazy about it. I don't have uh, groundhogs where I am, but I, I don't think, you know, having a mulch would, would you know, that's, that's not the main reason, you know, basically if a mole comes across your, or any one of those things comes across your garden and it's got stuff it likes, it's going to eat it. Um, so I would not, I would try it, <laughs> you know, I would try it. And uh, yeah, if a garden gets, uh, like there's one bed, uh, it's, it's fairly, fairly high and fairly dry. And I noticed a ridiculous number of the potatoes in that particular bed. It, it had been a, a compost bed before, I'd, I'd done composting in it. And then I just turned it into a hogoculture bed. And uh, I noticed that it, uh, the potatoes were getting, like a lot of them were, let's say, let's say 40% were partially eaten. So I just didn't plant potatoes for there for a couple years. Now I got potatoes growing there right now and not one of them are bitten. So I just, I just sort of said, okay, no potatoes over there for a little while. Let's let that calm down. Um, but honestly, I think over time, what happens is if you get, Perhaps when you bring the mulch in and you create this sort of nice, safe environment for those things, maybe the population does increase uh, for a season or two and you have some problems. I really didn't experience that here. Um, and I have all those pests here, except for the rats. Um, but even if the population does go up initially, the population of the things that kill those things is gonna go up in, in lockstep. Uh, that tends to be what happens. So, you know, when I first started gardening here, I noticed the odd snake, and now uh, at the height of summer, I, I see garter snakes all the time out here. They love it. Actually, since I put the sand out, they seem to love uh, hanging out in the sand. So, uh, and, and snakes love um, the mulch too. They, they tunnel through it, and they, they like going underneath it, and they, they like being on top of it when it's warm, and when it gets cold at night, they like going underneath it to stay warm. So it's an environment that the predators of those things like too. Now, if you live somewhere where there's poisonous snakes, that's a whole nother another thing I suppose but I know they use this approach in, in Australia where they have like more poisonous things than anywhere else so I don't, I'm not quite sure how they deal with it there you'd have to ask them uh, thankfully where I live I have no no such things um, anyway so that's that's the answer to the whole uh, mole vole mouse issue yeah sure they're gonna they're around I got them but it really doesn't it's the the lack of work the lack of my time needed to grow the potatoes uh, balances off any losses because as I said it might be one in 30 or one in t one in 20 one in 30 I would say uh, for every 30 potatoes I pick one might have a bite out of it uh, that's a pretty good deal for just putting potatoes on the ground putting a bunch of mulch on top and doing nothing all summer and then picking them when, when the summer's over <laughs> you know, that's a pretty good exchange in my opinion now to speak to the big question and the title of this video uh, my my Ruth Stout garden didn't work um, There's three things you need. Let's just talk about potatoes here, okay? I mean, this whole garden's a real stout garden. Everything uh, is, is a no-till mulched bed, okay? 
Uh, the example I did in that video was where I took a patch of uncultivated land with weeds on it. It could be your lawn, it could be grass. Um, this was just different uh, wild sort of field weeds, I guess. I mowed it down to the ground, threw potatoes on the grass, put about, I don't know, eight inches of leaves and grass clippings on top of that, and did nothing all summer and got some potatoes. Why might not that work for someone? Uh, I would have to say that it's one, it's one of three things. Either they didn't get enough heat, the plants didn't get enough sun, the potatoes didn't get enough water, or the existing soil that was there, because you're working with the existing soil, uh, wasn't good soil. <laughs> that's, that's basically it, right? So. Let me take you over to where, where I have my rooster garden growing and just talk you through this a little bit and explain what I'm talking about. All right, so this area here is where I had my rooster. And it looks like a tilled garden right now, but it wasn't. When I initially put this garden in, it looked like this area over here. Weeds, <laughs> right? And I just took a weed whacker and cut it down as close to the ground as I could laid the potatoes down and planted on top of that. Now I had good results here because I mean and you can tell look it's in the shade there's a lot of shade here right now because there's this uh, blackberry bush on the other side so I didn't even get ideal light really. Um, but I had good results here because I would say that the existing soil that all those weeds were in was reasonably good soil. Now I mean most of the soil is clay it's, it's very clayish um, but there was probably about an inch of soil on top of the clay from all these weeds growing year after year, right? Really, you know, a field of weeds is a permaculture garden. It just grows something you don't want. Um, every year the weeds grow and they die and create a mulch. And then more leaves grow and they die and create a mulch. And more leaves grow and they die and create a mulch. So there's organic matter breaking down in that field year after year after year. And the soil's building, right? Even though it's got this lousy, useless clay underneath. Um, yeah, I'll show you. Here. So the soil that all of this stuff is, is growing in, okay, is this hard stuff here. And you can see on this hill, there's bare earth everywhere. And nothing's growing. It's only till you get near the bottom of the hill, because the water tends to collect down here, that you get some decent growth. Right, because it's just uh, it's very dry and desert-like <laughs> in a sense, right? It's not desert, but anyway, you can just tell by the way things grow here. There isn't an abundance of water, and you can tell just by looking at the hill where the water starts to be available. Also, every time it rains, right, small particles of soil wash down this hill. The really good stuff, silt-like stuff, and it gathers at the base. So of course you get that's why we're getting these sort of lusher lusher, nicer weeds, fancy weeds, right? So that's the same kind of soil. The stuff underneath is the same thing that's underneath this whole area here. But because for a number of years before I'd actually claimed the space, um, this sort of weed field action had been going on, there's probably a good inch of soil there that's actually half decent stuff. Now, by virtue of the fact that I put a mulch over this whole thing, I killed all the weeds, right? So the weeds die, and their roots have nothing to do, so the roots die. That's all organic matter. Potatoes are growing on top of that, but their roots are able to sort of wiggle their way down into the soil that all that stuff was growing in. Because I've killed all of those weeds, the nutrients that are in that soil that the weeds are in is solely for the potatoes, because the weeds aren't growing anymore. They can't grow because kind of weeds I've got here anyway just can't get through the mulch, can't push their way through. They're starved for light and they just die for lack of light. So now the potatoes get to use the soil. All that root mass and that green matter from the weeds is breaking down. As that breaks down, you know, the, the worms are eating it, different mi microorganisms are eating it. It's all rotting and breaking, fungi are, are, are working on it, right? So all that stuff is breaking down. Every time it rains, the, uh, there's you know, some uh, nutrients that are in the mulch, but all that rotting stuff that's in that, that layer of breaking down grass, every time it rains, that's getting sort of rained down into where the potato roots are, and it's feeding the potatoes. 
So every time it rains, the potatoes are getting fertilized, right? So, and of course the potatoes are tough enough that they can just push their way through that mulch and they get up through it. So basically you, you took a piece of ground which was populated by weeds. You made it impossible for the weeds to live there. You, you planted something else there that's ideal, that can ideally deal with the mulch. And so all the nutrients that were there become available to the potatoes and nutrients continue to become available over time because of the stuff it's breaking down. That's why I had success there, but if, if you didn't have success, it's very likely that you did this over soil that just had nothing, really nothing going for it. Like right? really, really poor soil. A lousy, lousy soil. Now that's not to say that repeated applications of this won't build that soil. They will. Right? So let's say you planted some potatoes this way, same way I did on your soil, and you got like two little lousy potatoes per plant. Right? Setting aside, maybe there wasn't enough sun, maybe there wasn't enough water. Let's say you had enough sun and water, very likely, right? Um, yeah, you had a lousy yield, and you had yet lousy results. I would imagine all the weeds are dead, though, right? All the weeds are gone. So at least you've got that now, right? And because you put a mulch on it for an entire season, all that matter is broken down and improved the soil. I wouldn't be surprised, I mean, you shouldn't plant the same thing year after year, but if you were go going to, if you planted potatoes there the next year, you'd probably get slightly better yield. Or if you plant something else there the following year, you know, you'd probably get a good result. I, I would say if, if, it's, if you don't have the, like, out, out here, outside my garden enclosure, I have a risk of deer and things like that, so I, I have to plant things that they leave alone. But if it was inside my garden and I did a roof star potato garden and I got lousy results, I would plant beans in that garden the next year because if you had all the water you needed and you had all the uh, sun you needed and you got lousy results with, with potatoes, which is the easiest thing in the world to grow, then your soil is no good. The existing soil isn't good. But you're building the soil, right? You don't need to go buy a bunch of soil. Just by the fact that you had a mulch over, for a, over it for a season, you've, you've already improved it somewhat. So I would say for next year, I would plant beans there because beans have, have almost no needs, right? Beans will grow almost anywhere. They make their own nitrogen so that they sort of do well in poor soils. And if uh, when the beans are done growing, instead of pulling them out of the ground, you just cut them off, um, chances are they're going to actually increase the nitrogen in the soil a little bit themselves. Um, there's different debates about that, but I think the net effect, I think beans have a positive, a net positive sort of effect on soil in terms of nitrogen count when you leave the roots in. Uh, so that's what I, I would do if you didn't get good results. Uh, it's not because the Ruth Stout method doesn't work, because Ruth Stout wouldn't have had a beautiful garden <laughs> if it didn't work, and all kinds of people wouldn't be saying it works if it didn't work, and there would be no permaculture and so on and so forth. It, it totally works. What, 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 what reason would someone have to make this up, right? It's not like you're selling the method, right? If, 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 if a million people put in a Ruth Stout garden next year, I don't make a penny off of that, <laughs> so I, I don't see why anyone, um, maybe some more people buy Ruth Stout books, but that's not going to do me any good, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't see why anyone would be disingenuous about that. If it's not working for you, it's because of one of those three reasons, and probably the third one, probably just because you're, the existing soil was very, very poor. Uh, what's the other thing? Someone asked me, um, you know, will that increase the uh, acidity of the soil? No, I mean, putting all those different things on it won't increase the acidity. Um, I don't know why people seem to think uh, that's the case. Anyway, I hope that answered some people's questions. Um, if you're uh, not tilling your garden and you're applying successive layers of mulch, you've got a roof still garden. Don't worry about rats and moles and mice. If it was a really big problem, I wouldn't really have m much results here. Uh, I've got all of those things. I don't have rats, but I have mice and moles and voles. Uh, I've got all those things here, and uh, they do a tiny bit of damage, but really it's... It's, it's, it's negligible relative to the results I get, uh, especially in light of how little work I do. Uh, and uh, yeah, if your Ruth Stoke garden didn't work, uh, just try again. <laughs> you know, because uh, even if you got dismal results, um, if you put a layer of mulch down over a bunch of uh, weeds or grass or whatever, at the very least, you've uh, removed that from the equation. And you know, you could have a soil that's really, really poor. And all those living organisms that improve the soil for you, um, they, they might take a couple of years to, to really get going. Right? There's a certain environment they need, just like in a forest, right? Every year a forest 
mulches itself. Same with a field, every a field or a meadow. Every year, uh, all the plants in the meadow fall down. That's a mulch. Every year, the trees drop their leaves. Um, that's a mulch. And no one tills those systems. And there's all kinds of living things in the ground that are working on all of that stuff. And those things are always perpetually improving the soil. So if you've got a garden bed or a plot of earth or a piece of lawn, and uh, you try to root out thing and the results, results were poor, it's probably because the soil underneath there was just so, so not the way it needs to be. And it might take a season or two to get it there, but it's totally worth it. Um, so, uh, you know, just try again next year, maybe try planting some beans because they, they'll, they'll grow in the lousiest soil in the world. And uh, just stay with it. Uh, if it. If it didn't work, there wouldn't be people all over the place uh, using this approach saying it's great. <laughs> right? um, I hope you like this video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Click the little bell if you want to get indications on uh, when I put out a new video. Um, or for that matter, um, like if you don't have a, not everyone has a YouTube account, I understand that. But maybe you have a Facebook account. If you have a Facebook account, you can follow me on Facebook. I got a Facebook page. I always, uh, whenever I put a new video up, I, I mention it on Facebook. And also, if you want to comment on my videos but you don't have a YouTube account, if you uh, have a Facebook account, you can comment on Facebook and uh, maybe get into a Twitter war or something like that. <laughs> I don't really like that too much. Uh, but if you have any kind of questions, that's a good way to, to throw them at me and, and also uh, access some of the uh, other viewers. There's a lot of very knowledgeable viewers uh, that uh, watch my channel that uh, I get some of my best ideas for videos and even for things I do in my garden for my viewers. So keep the comments coming. Uh, Hope you liked that video. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. Check out my podcast, MaritimeGardening.com. And until next time, get out there, get at it. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching. <laughs>